The 2013 G20 summit has drawn to a close. Leaders from the group of 20 met in St. Petersburg, Russia for less than 48 hours, trying to tackle some of the world's most pressing economic problems. But it was uh, impossible to keep Syria away from the spotlight. Correspondent Roy Rutenberg reports. You might call this year's G20 summit a success, especially if you're its host, Vladimir Putin. Despite predictions by naysayers that the gathering of the group of 20 world leaders was destined for hijacking by tensions over Syria, the Russian president pushed ahead with an economic agenda. I'd like to thank my colleagues from the G20 for the joint productive work. We managed to make a lot of important practical decisions both for the international community and the Russian economy. In the end, the group of 20 leaders representing nearly 90 percent of global output put forth a joint declaration that includes tackling tax evasion, promoting multilateral trade, fine-tuning financial regulations, and creating, quote, qualitative jobs, specifically for young people. But disunity was surprisingly on display. The traditional family photo lasted but a few seconds before the leaders split off and retreated back to work. And divisions over a possible U.S.-led strike on Syria often stole the summit's economic spotlight. Will we help Syria? Yes, we will. We are doing it now, supplying arms, cooperating in the area of economy, and hopefully we will cooperate more on humanitarian issues and giving support to civilians. Despite his best efforts to make this summit about economics, Putin was pressed about Syria during his closing remarks to the media. In response, he revealed that his foreign minister and the American Secretary of State would meet soon, as he put it, to figure out the best way forward. Rowie Ruttenberg, CCTV in St. Petersburg.